Dr Lee, thank you for joining me. Could you please start by explaining your work at the Mayo Clinic and more about the goals of the Mayo Clinic Centre for Social Media itself? Sure. Our Mayo Clinic uh, Center for Social Media was uh, created just a little over two years ago, so it was two years ago in July, and the idea was to build upon what we had been doing in social media for the previous four or five years, uh, which had been essentially using social media for PR and marketing to support the work that my team you know, had already been doing. And we really see through the Center for Social Media an opportunity to go beyond that uh, to apply these revolutionary tools in uh, health promotion, in improving health care, and throughout our organization uh, in education, in research, in clinical practice, in administration. So our goal with the Center for Social Media is to uh, think more broadly, uh, to think globally, and to identify applications for social media tools like blogs, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and their you know, private label analogs, uh, and how we can apply those uh, to make healthcare better. And what do you see to be the advantages of blogging? Well, blogging is you know a blog. Blogs are misunderstood uh, because people tend to think of bloggers as sort of subhuman life forms that sit in the basement all day and never get out of their <laughs> pajamas and and say you know snarky uh, things. But really all a blog is is a really easy way to publish a website. And uh, I really have it as sort of the, almost the peak of, the, of, the, of what I call the social media pyramid, that it's, it really ties things together because you can embed video, you can embed audio, uh, you can obviously include photos, include links uh, to other resources. It really is the um, unifying home base, I guess, for a social media presence. And could you tell me more about SMUG? Yeah, so SMUG, or Social Media University Global, is my uh, tongue-in-cheek university, of which I am the chancellor. Uh, it uh, started as my personal blog just a little over six years ago, and as I was doing a presentation to a group, they asked me to do a, a Facebook 101 course. And you know, previously, my blog was under a different name called Lines from Lee. But I kind of joked during that presentation when I got some in-depth questions, I said, well, that's in the 201 class, which gave me a thought that I could reorganize and rebrand my blog uh, in the form of an online university, uh, since those are becoming so, uh, so popular. But this is a chance to um, have a little fun uh, in the spirit of uh, social media and a little tongue-in-cheek, but also then to have some serious learning. So I set things up with a you know, Facebook 101, 102, 103 sort of sequence, as well as you know, blogging 101, 102, 103 that uh, people can work through um, on their own and uh, just at, at their own pace and be able to, in uh, uh, systematic sequential order, uh, be able to get the basics of how to use these tools and uh, actually a bunch beyond the basics too because we have the higher level courses like the, the 300s and the 400 series where there are case studies and uh, of application of these tools, um, not just in healthcare. Uh, healthcare is obviously what I do uh, during during the day, but uh, Smug is a little broader than that. And how do you personally define social media? I guess I would um, define social media as um, in, as um, interactive communications, uh, in which anyone has the power to communicate with the world. Um, previously, you had to have an FCC license in the United States or whatever other government license uh, and a you know, TV or radio transmitter uh, to be able to broadcast uh, to the world. You know, in this case, uh, with this audio uh, from this interview, we definitely could be reaching the world as well, or at least the people in the world who are interesting, interested in it. Um, but the other neat part about it, the, the second part of it, is not just broadcast, it's two-way or multi-way. It's, it's one-to-many, many-to-many uh, communication so that it's not just um, people who are anointed by either a government agency or by having a printing press uh, that are able to uh, communicate, but it's anybody can. And what advice would you offer companies who are devising their social media strategy? And what sort of questions should they be asking? 
I think the big thing for companies to remember as they are developing a social media strategy is what is their core business and what are they trying to accomplish and how can these tools be harnessed to help them do that. So they may spend money on research and focus groups. Well, listening to social media is a great way to get a, a much more, um, I guess, genuine, um, authentic voice of the customer because uh, you're hearing what they already are out there saying about you. I mean, they and and you may hear that they're not talking about you, which is telling you and giving you a message too. Um, but you know, if I, I would look at whatever uh, your your bottom line kind of uh, business objectives are that you're trying to accomplish, as well as the um, ingredients that get you there, and looking at uh, understanding these tools, their capabilities, not necessarily what they were invented for in the first place, but how they can be deployed to accomplish your purposes. And then, you know, do that. Um, I advise people to think like MacGyver. Um, MacGyver, the you know, famous uh, TV series where um, he was the protagonist was known for being resourceful and uh, taking what was just sort of lying around and deploying it to accomplish what he needed to get done in that particular episode. And I just say think like that uh, in the workplace. And how would you define success in social media? Well, I think each organization and, and each individual needs to uh, define success uh, in their own terms. And uh, again, according to what they are trying to accomplish through their involvement. Um, if all you're doing is spending time um, and not accomplishing some kind of business objective, um, you're not being successful. In our case, in using social media or media relations, which was my original job as the as the manager of our media relations team, part of my goal was to to tell stories and spread those stories about Mayo Clinic research advances or um, you know, positive patient stories uh, to be able to share those through journalists to the general public. Uh, as we were defining success, one of those elements was how could we use these tools to better inform journalists or better entice them into um, considering a story by making audio and video resources and have better explain what the story is all about. Um, and so one of the endpoints that we'd see out of that was did we get news stories resulting from uh, but then beyond that, uh, we look at people who are able to access our information directly uh, without having to go through one of the um, traditional media outlets to actually see and hear and read our stories. Um, then another part of it is their interactive interactivity with it, and are they sharing uh, the stories with their um, family and friends? So there are all sorts of measurements again, based on what was the original point, which was share stories about um, good things happening at Mayo Clinic. And what examples of social media use, both within and outside of healthcare companies, have you seen that you deem to be a success? Well, we belong to a group called the Social Media Business, what well, was originally called the Blog Council, then it became the Social Media Business Council. Now it's at socialmedia.org. And socialmedia.org is a group of large companies uh, using social media um, and the common denominator, they're sort of on essentially Fortune 500 companies um, using social media. Um, we're not a for-profit company and so we just are large. I mean, we're about an $8 billion uh, a year organization and so the common things that we have um, you know, as being a large, being large, relatively bureaucratic organization, there are challenges that this, um, you know, this uh, um, boundaryless communication can have in a large organization like that. So we're we're learning together with that group about using these tools in in large organizations in society. So I mean, through that we we've, we've come across lots of companies that are. Using, tool, using these tools effectively, whether it's listening to their employees and gathering ideas and crowdsourcing ideas for new products, or um, you know, Dell computer, for instance, um, has sold a lot of refurbished computers on Twitter. Um, and that's something that 
you know, they've sold a few million dollars worth of computers that way, offering you know special deals with almost no marketing expense. So it really, um, you know, each each uh, company has its own uh, objectives and needs, and there are many of them that are out there using these tools uh, to meet those. And finally, how do you see social media evolving, and what do you think it will look like in 10 years' time? Well, considering that Facebook is like six or seven years old, you know, 10 years' time is kind of uh, uh, a long uh, time frame, and even three to five years is hard to know. I guess what I would say is we will see the increasingly uh, being these tools increasingly being used and variations and, and offshoots developing you know, to meet particular needs. Uh, as people... Uh, think of new uh, functionality. And Pinterest, for instance, was uh, is a new site, you know, relatively new site that was one of the fastest to get to 10 million, uh, you know, users um, in history. And that's essentially a pin board or you know, bulletin board where people are able to share primarily images of things that that are interesting to them. And you know, that's something that. I didn't see coming, <laughs> uh, and so it's hard, it's hard to know. But I guess what I would say is that the principle uh, that you'll see is now with nearly nearly a trillion people, no, yeah, no, nearly a billion, I'm sorry, 900 million, nearly a billion, um, nearly a billion people using Facebook uh, regularly, uh, that is, this is something that's here to stay and it's something that's going to increase and something that's going to be an expectation for uh, web users and mobile users uh, that they will be able to interact with uh, companies. And so that's why it really behooves uh, organizations of all sizes uh, to at least consider how these tools will affect them. But I would say more importantly to look at how they can harness these tools uh, to uh, meet their business goals and to help them improve as an organization. Lee, thank you very much for your time and for your insights.